Today in the news we got pretty bad comments from another executive, Nvidia doing some work on an almost but not really perfect keyboard. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. This year, we got our first proper taste of Intel versus AMD. The Ryzen 3000 series came out with both fists swinging at the same time. No, wait, that does Anyways, with all the benchmarks from all the reviewers, it was clear that AMD had a superior product in hand. But Intel still thinks that the blue team has the better gaming product. I can't say I completely disagree, but I'm about 95% there. Troy Severson from Intel said at Gamescom a year ago when we introduced the i9-9900K, it was dubbed the fastest gaming CPU in the world. And I can say honestly, nothing has changed. I think you've heard a lot of press from the competition recently, but when we go out and actually do the real world testing, not the synthetics benchmark, but doing real world testing of how these games perform on our platform, we stack the 99 900K against the Ryzen 9 3900X. They're running a 12 core part and we're running an 8 core. <sighs> what is it with executives and dumb statements these days? So yes, the 9900K is great, but it's certainly not the best CPU for gaming 100% of the time. Titles like Rainbow Six Siege and CSGO are actually faster on the AMD platform. And when AMD loses, it's not by a lot. Open an instance of OBS in the mix and Intel's performance drops significantly. And if we go into productivity benchmarks, the Intel SKUs get stomped. And all of that is made possible from AMD at the same price point as Intel. So yeah, if we look at all of the aspects of the CPU and not just specifically gaming, I mean, people do other things. AMD wins. Moving on to some Nvidia news, they just released their special Gamescom drivers and I've gotta say, it's a good one. I usually don't talk about driver releases here since most of the time it's kind of pointless, but on this one, Nvidia goes straight after both AMD and Intel. AMD revealed their anti-lag feature at E3 for their Navi GPUs and when Nvidia heard about it, they said that they've been doing the same thing for the last decade. Well, it looks like it wasn't quite the same thing because their Gamescom drivers now come with an ultra low latency mode, which does essentially the same thing as Radeon anti-lag. That ultra low latency mode will be available to all GeForce GPUs. They really have to stop contradicting themselves like that. I mean, don't say that you've been doing the same thing for a decade and then work just to make your own version of it. Just appreciate what the competition does and implement your own version. That way, you don't get flack for it. For Intel, the company announced integer scaling to their Gen 11 graphics a few weeks ago. Go. In case you don't know, integer scaling is a way to upscale an image in a pixel perfect way. It prevents blurriness seen in most linear upscalers like uh, on the image right here. The right one is integer scaling versus the left one which looks a lot blurrier on the edges. Well now, Nvidia introduced Turing integer scaling into their drivers. It's enabled directly from the Nvidia control panel and it's the perfect tool for you to make your classic games look great again. I guess all that's left is for AMD to introduce integer scaling so we can all play our retro games the way they were intended to. In that case though, integer scaling only works with Turing GPUs. I wonder how many of you guys are playing retro games on your PC? Let me know down below. Next up, we got the RGB King itself, Corsair, who just launched a brand new keyboard, the K57 RGB. It's actually a pretty interesting one since the RGB LEDs used are the same as on their Dominator RGB RAM. It's those tiny super packed LEDs that they call Capellix. They're apparently 60% brighter and also 60% more efficient, according to Corsair, which is great since this keyboard is actually wireless. The company says that it can last up to 175 hours, but that's probably with either the LEDs off or at low brightness. And it uses their Slipstream tech for the wireless, which apparently boasts a one millisecond response time. It's a full keyboard with macros on the left, which I really like, but the only problem is it's not mechanical. It's a shame, really. If this thing was mechanical and wireless, it would be a 100% buy for me. I tried wireless mechanical keyboards in the past, like I think the Dravo Caliber is the one that I tried, 
but it was bad. Some keys got queued up and sometimes it would just repeat key presses. And they're mostly 10 keyless, which is a no-no for me nowadays. Corsair, please make a mechanical versions of that keyboard of the K57 at $150 or less. Oh, and by the way, the K57 is uh, $100 right now. Lastly, in smartphone news, it looks like LG is about to jump into the folding phone market. They just unveiled a teaser on their YouTube channel with the description, life is better when it's 360, possibly hinting at a phone that folds completely over itself. Now, looking at the outline of the phone, I doubt that this is an actual folding screen, but since LG is a display manufacturer, you never know what kind of innovations they might have in their bag. If it is a dual screen phone though that folds, it would be similar to LG's previous phone, the V50, which featured an accessory that snapped onto the phone to give it a second screen. It could also just be the follow-up to the V50, but with a dual screen accessory that would fold all the way back since the V50's dual screen didn't allow for a 360 rotation. I'm pretty hyped up to see what this actually is. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. Don't forget to leave a like if you liked it. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Mm.